that bleeds into the yellow, as our rainbows tell us. Into green, the second chakra. The root is actually yellow. You see it all around you here. It's a calming influence, the color yellow, by the way. It's a calming influence, the color yellow, by the way. By the way, if you start hearing my voice repeat, you've entered a psychotic state. By the way, if you start to hear my voice repeat, you've entered a psychotic state. I'm just kidding. That was awful. I apologize. I don't know. Saying uh, my respects to the great sun, these great waters, these living beings, these living beings around me, though my own mother, my own mother, uh, to the animals, to the beasts, uh, whose power I greet and whose power I know if I greet them properly and if I know them properly. I get to greet their power, and I get to, to know their power, and I get to know my own power. So that I don't have to take, you know, from things, but to greet them. And take what is yours, of the power that you can share with them. And that's a normal relationship at the second chakra. And you'll notice that nature performs that way, it's intelligence, all of the time. And that's a good way to take some lead from the sun, from the earth and from our own roots. To understand that sharing in the power relationships with the earth are completely opposite than the power relationships that people learn. If one takes nothing else from my videos today, from living, just living in the general world, the general population, where there is nothing but lying. There's nothing but taking and robbing 
and you notice just the TV characters lying and insulting each other, running each other down, but caring anyway, because they're all sociopaths. That's how they behave. And it's an interest for, the, for you to find that funny. And they're inverted, and they're Baphomet, satanic priests, and they'll make jokes about not having penises, because they don't. And the characters don't mind. Chandler and Friends, he's run down, his sexuality is questioned all the time. Monica refers to having a penis. Oh, it's all a big laugh. They're having a big laugh on you. That's part of the fun. It's part of knowledge. Satire, running people down, for certain people, um, mocking, is a form of high society. Right? You'll even find high literature done in a satirical end. Dante was actually, in many sense, very sophisticated satire of the world that he lived in. People were satirized in Dante's Inferno. He threw political enemies and adversaries into hell. And he satirized them there. Or so we think. I think ridicule is a big part of what runs the world, the magic built-in ridicule is a level of sharing knowledge. If someone is sarcastic with you, I've heard sociopaths will be sarcastic to me as a form of lying. For instance, I asked my brother once, would you like to hear about some of the injuries that I suffered from your behavior? Answer, yeah, if you really need to do that kind of thing, right? Meaning, I shouldn't need to. Yes or no? Is that a yes or a no? You don't know, right? Try it if you want. See what happens. Or yeah, I don't care. What's the truth in that situation? So what? You should be okay with that, was the message of my brother. Oh, you should be fine with that. My brother's a sociopath. And he works in social services. And he was recently investigated for being abusive to a child that he was going to have in his home. And while I think it is good that he was exonerated under the circumstances, um, I don't necessarily would want to put in a position of having to vouch for my brother's character. Um, but I am a fair man. You know, and he's probably actually okay at his job. But I wouldn't want to be his child. And his oldest son, with a black woman, is already showing clear signs of psychopathy and demonic influence. And it's a Christian home, right? And my mom, you know, received injuries just by going there. It just preys on people like my mom and me. Because we live, so a lot of things could be seen as the way they are, the way we think, what we accept, what we don't what we know, what we don't, what we just have to resort to taking in and believing about the world because either we're really stupid or we were just never meant to figure out the whole world by ourselves and to be surrounded by people that have become traitorous morons that spend their lives protecting the very thing that hurts us the most because they were so effectively hurt by it and having forced people to basically hate their parents and then lie about it and find all their success in life by doing so. And finding all kinds of estrangement, like the Big Bang, of the nothing that everyone eventually ends up coming from. And the nothing that their lives always seem to add up to. And I've watched it happen in my own family. The white people don't share traditions. They don't share joy very much. They don't get out in nature. Understand their emotional being and their physical being in terms of the living intelligence around them. And I'm just a stupid fucking white man. I'm just a stupid fucking white man. How the fuck? I'm just a stupid fucking white man. I'm nobody. I'm a stupid fucking white man. That's actually what I am. As far as the red people are concerned, and they'd be right. Hopefully, they won't eat me. I come here and I, I hear the spirit of the bear around these places. And that's a mighty spirit. And it has my respect like the red people have my respect. And that's all that, they, that I have to offer them. That in my stupidity. But 
I've, I've come to cults with a lot more of my obedience. You know, and I don't feel like the world of this earth or the red man is going to hurt me. And it's good that neither of us are around each other. It's sort of the same way I feel about my family. Unfortunately, and to some of the red men, that they would hear the sadness in my heart and they would beat the drum for me. And I hear the drum out here beating me, the drum for my, not beating me, but I can beat myself, thank you very much. But I can hear the drum that beats for my sadness, the sheer generosity of the spirit of the red man, which I would, I feel that it would be good therapy for me to attest to and to find myself, if I, if I can count any reason that I come out here with a sore back today and just soreness all over and say, this is a good justification for going for a walk. This is a good justification for the whole meaning of my life that I should just find the sacred drumbeat out here or the sacred path or, you know, hey, bring the wounds of my family, that my father, which I carry with me through life and my mother and my siblings and all the sociopathy I've talked about. And you have to fucking learn to see how good sociopaths can lie and understand that their brains are lying to you and you can't argue with that brain. And when you live in that world, you've probably learned to justify it, accept it, ignore it, and work with it. And none of those things mean that anyone is a bad person or a sociopath. But people come a long way in the world in finding to survive socially and physically and sexually. Nothing coherent is presented to their minds. The world is, in a sense, every bit as bad as anyone thinks it is. But they don't take it far enough because it didn't start yesterday and it hasn't just come in and it insulted you the moment you heard about it. It's been insulting your family all of their lives. And that's a hard sadness to come across. And no one wants to be in a poor or vulnerable situation. Men and women don't want to imagine themselves as victims and vulnerable. Some of them even get addicted to it. You might say it's not doing them any good to think of themselves as victims all the time. But somewhere in there, being a victim is a truthful and honest thing in nature. If you're underpowered, if you're weak, if you don't look like a man used to look, can you imagine that? Maybe mentally, in an environment that actually pays attention to all of you and not just to suck the life out of you. Although it's more than happy to do that too. But you have some say in it. Be respectful, acknowledge your environment. Say, hey, if a tree is going to fall today, I would love to be out of its way. Thank you very much. If it does happen today, I hope it's quick. I don't want to stay under it for very long. I want to go. i got other things to do. I never want to be as trapped as I already felt in my own home when I was a child. I don't want to be as trapped as I felt in my 20s by the unmitigated cruelty of all of these honest, so-called honest, hardworking people and the cupidity and moral ambivalence of everything and everyone around me and how happy they were to tell me that the curses that they were laying on me meant nothing, even though the opposite was precisely true. I lived in an opposite world. And in my 30s and 40s, where I became more closely acquainted through female lovers and the like with the kind of sociopathy that lived in even some of the best people that I managed to find that what I liked most about them was what came to be most connected to their ability to avoid what I liked least about them, in that they had been thrown into these so-called spiritual or health-related organizations and had sought prominent positions within them precisely because they had never had any proper guidance as children. And it become sociopaths that went into some deeper feeling states, but mostly had found a way to walk on water, essentially. To not ever get wet when it came to their emotional being. You know, you've, anything you've got to learn, you've got to immerse yourself in. If, you're, if you can't immerse yourself in your emotional, the truths, the emotional truths of your life, you're never getting wet. You're never going to learn to make use of that water. It's like trying to drink without putting any water in your mouth. Your brain needs to feed on your emotional existence. And in indulging all of my hatred and fear, and I have a good deal of both, I could be accused of being far too indulgent. There's all kinds of dangers that people are told, just like those fucking orange signs. If you spend time indulging all of your feelings and misgivings, you'd be better putting that time becoming a better fucking sociopath. And that's what I've spent 
the last 10 years of my life just noticing more and more deeply. Writing helps learn. I, re I wrote a lot of books about it, particularly coming from my personal experiences. I started blogging because my mind was just noticing so much every day. My landlord, my roommate, my landlord, my roommate, my landlord, my friend, my friend, my friend, my landlord, my roommate, my family, my landlord, my roommate, my family. Sociopathy everywhere around me. You know, people who thought that greeting me in the first night in their home was best done by sexually assaulting me in one way or another. We thought that the best way to guarantee our continued friendship into the future was to sexually humiliate me before I left their home. And it just seems to be how these types of people's minds operate. They want something, and so they generally find themselves in an orientation with you where something has to happen moving forward. And by the way, they're always going forward. You meet everybody, especially retired people, they're always moving forward. Forward is like a four-letter word. Forward is a curse for thinking you're going somewhere, for never going anywhere at all. Anyone who tells you they're moving forward in life, you know the opposite is true. Right? I never go forward. Right? I stopped going forward a long time ago, as you can tell. And would you believe that people will hear the sound of my voice and think that I'm a loser? They think... That it, or they think that it shouldn't require too much effort to come to the conclusions which I've come to and to have this kind of voice. Because these are cowards and pussies and traitors and sick and demonized and sad and pitiful creatures. And none of that matters to them, even though they give every evidence of it. None of that actually matters. They don't suffer any sensibility of their own, of how the world might have influenced them. And so in all that I see about the calumny of the world, believe me, I have spent a good deal of my life immersed in all of the strongest and most violent suggestions that it's actually just me and there's something wrong with me. Don't think I haven't made my bones in the biblical scales of guilt, which is directed like a fucking laser at the heart of man. And again, I come back to that point, the boat of natives run by the beat of the heart being sent through the voice of their leader. The drum, the sacred drum. White people on the similar catamaran, noise working against each other. Working at the lowest possible level as well as you can and thinking you're the fucking top of the world and the king of the world. And the king of the world is some sexual perversion spelled over the color and function, if at all, of the second shocker of man at every level. It's everything the Bible's about. It's a curse from beginning to end. And it's the energy of curses, and we have to be aware that it's an energy. It's not just some bad fucking ideas. It's not just a malicious and hateful story. There are scales of hatred, of multiplicative orders, like a really carcinogenic street drug that have been put into those symbols. Right? A letter is a cavity that is meant to carry the wisdom of our people to carry energy as much as our own semen carries information in the world and carries forth the scintillating interaction with one's environment. We don't even know the meaning of liberty as white people. Don't even know the meaning. Listen to a, a fleet-footed red man crossing a forest on their bare feet and then tell me you've heard the sound of freedom and you've seen the wolf in the eyes of another man. Then you know the sound of freedom. Don't tell me you even know a fucking thing about freedom. Tell me you look forward to getting to know it and are willing to take a certain amount of risk in everything this civilization says is going forward to get in a few circles in some local woodlands. As you've been going in circles your whole life, it's an incredible fucking circle. The fucking seasons take place in that circle. Think about what it means to you and forget the fucking circles of your geometers and geomancers and gurus, your musicians and actors and all of these fucking sodomites. These are pitiful and ridiculous people. Every fucking one of them. But they're incredible fucking actors and liars. Incredible. They're fucking narcissists through and through. And they're your best friend. If you meet them, everyone around you in a nation of the greatest warriors in the world would think them their best fucking friend. They could get the most fucking vicious wilderness to lay on its back. I've seen sociopaths do this. Scratch its fucking belly. Like fucking Hannibal Lecter walking over the murderous pigs. In Silence of the Lambs. They even make a best friend out of you. They'll show you on the TV shows how sociopaths can make the best quick friends out of people. 
Not that making friends is the worst thing. You see what I'm telling you? They are your fucking best friend. They might have been the best friend you ever had. Ellen DeGeneres might be the nicest fucking person who ever lived. She's fucking Saint Ellen already. Ella, Ella, Ella. Give me your fucking umbrella. It's fucking raining all day long with the blood of our ancestors. Let's dance in it. Let's have some fun. Let's celebrate life. So I want to hear the drum of the red people. I want to hear the drum of truthfulness and emotional honesty. I'm going to move my fucking body in a safe space to move it around. I don't want to dance with the fucking glorified chimpanzees. I want to be friendly to myself, to my feelings. I'm going to bring them to these sacred places and find the visions that I can. And I want to respect the spirits that I find here. For there is a good deal that is not visible to the white man, which is critical to our existence. And this should not be arbitrated like everything else, be it law or religion or spirit, by people who are far too handy and far too little, with words that have some say in the vital interactions of our minds and of our bodies, which has left it far too costly not to be too vigilant about our own thoughts and our own ideas and our daily lives, and who is claiming that they have some control of them. Even down to the word forward. That what are you doing to move forward today? What's your life map? What's your, what's your five-year plan? Every fucking socialist path I met always had a five-year plan. They're always going somewhere. Got to get those awards and those degrees. Got to get here. They're all moving through life. It always seems like... It just, it just seems so natural. You want to read their life story. They go from job to job to career and they end up here in the home office and boom, boom, boom. I met a guy who was bragging that a teenage kid came through this town... Went through, went through a local to provincial uh, art uh, theater to the National Theater. He's already in the National Theater of Canada as its director. Right? Woohoo! We like that one. Whip them right through. It's almost artistic, isn't it? It's theatrical. Watch how the young man takes the stage of the National Theatre, interacting its operations with uncanny resolve. Dun, 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 dun. Out of the Queen's country herself came the anus of man, and therefore walked a young man as his stride as he came into the chemical-ridden prospect of adolescence as it robbed him of anything left of a natural man and left him astute, keen, and wary, anxious to please those around him with the exploits of one so keenly trained with the theatrical and thespian's eye that he can move upon such a, a bombshell of a minefield of a world and yet step his way with adequate supervision into an exemplary, socially oriented career, having long been deprived of any semblance of the thing itself. Hello, hello, we love you. And yesterday, just today, we. The past means nothing more. The people are so gore. We're going to head forward now forever. We're moving forward, yes. Give me your vaccines. The government's always good, and they always mean the best. Never question the big ideas of the world. There's always someone smarter than you, and someone smarter than they. And the smartest people of all should have the greatest say. Words are never powerful when they make you pay. That's right. Words are never all that powerful when they make you pay. They make you pay. Go well, anyway. You pay for it every day. You work for the bank. Say, hey, you love to work for the slave masters. Ooh, and they look and they ridicule you every day. You turn on the TV and they make jokes about your pee-pee. They switch it around with the children. If you lose one, you could just get another one. That's how they think of their babies. They eat them just like yours. They suck on the dicks, suck the blood out of their pricks, and then they gorge themselves. Then you go to the funeral home. They're eating your grandmother's pussy. They're eating her flesh like the pigs they are. They're the demons that have infested them. It's all very gory. Yes, it is. And no one wants to think just what happens when you no longer have mental control of your dink. <laughs> 